Hey gang, what's good? It's Wes. Hope you're doing well. So, you know how the past few weeks I've been hinting that there's some big news? Well, this is part of that big news. I am officially a featured artist for Rebel. So they had an open kind of uh, open art call uh, for different artists around the world. And they wanted to feature some artists. And I made the cut, which is crazy. Um, so I'm going to have a link to that in the, the show notes. And uh, yeah, I can't believe it. A huge thank you to the team at Escape Motions for uh, making this happen and reaching out. And uh, they've been incredible. And uh, yeah, I love Rebel. I've used Rebel um, since the early days of Rebel 3. So to be a featured artist for you know one of my favorite painting apps is just unbelievable. Um, but I thought to celebrate, we should, we should really embrace what makes Rebel so awesome. And that's its ability to use mixed media. So it has, I think, the best watercolor engine I've ever seen as far as just the breadth of it and the way the dynamics of the water work and stuff. And we'll talk about that. But, uh, you know, I love using the acrylics. I love using uh, now kind of the thicker oil paints that they have and they added. Just unbelievable stuff. So we're going to be doing a still life from beginning blank canvas all the way to completion. Uh, you're going to see all of that. It took exactly two hours. It took two hours and like 39 seconds or something um, is what my timeline or what my uh, recording says for that. So uh, it took about two hours for that. Uh, hope you learn a little something. We talk about still lifes. We talk about kind of the flexibility of Rebel. But before we do that, I wanted to give a, a quick shout out to the actual still life picture that we're using. So I'm going to post a link to it in the description below. But I want to give a shout out to Irina Mosina, who is the uh, photographer. I got this off of Shutterstock. And uh, yeah, I'm going to link to that in the description. So if you want to follow along, if you kind of want to see what we're working with that way, uh, that way you can do it. But yeah, without further ado, let's dig in. Let's see what this mixed media has to offer us inside of Rebel for this uh, for this awesome, awesome still life. But once again, thank you to Escape Motions. Appreciate you all so very much. There's some more big news coming very, very soon. Some of it might be Rebel related. Some of it might be something different. Uh, but yeah, let's get going. Let's do this still life and let's talk about the, the workhorse, the power that is mixed media in Rebel. All right, just had a sip of coffee. Here we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I wanted to do kind of a traditional style of still life study. Usually whenever I, it's funny, whenever I don't have kind of a big topic or a, a theme that I really want to uh, get out there as far as art, I usually go back to either doing a portrait study, a master study, or a still life study. And all three of these are really good just because they help me with proportions. And proportions is something I think I can always improve on. Uh, just being able to look at something and accurately get that down onto a canvas just with the eye. And that's kind of the method that we're doing this time. I didn't want to go exactly one for one, but I wanted to get the overall, the, the feel of it. And uh, I'm just going to kind of break down how I, how I did this and kind of what these layers look like. And it, at first, I started with a sketch. I'm starting to sketch more. I know we've talked about it a lot on the channel, but I don't like the way I sketch. I, I don't know what the intent is whenever I do sketch. A lot of people can just do full pieces, just pencil. I'm not one of them. Um, at least I don't think my, my line quality or my design sense is strong enough to do that. Usually what I use sketches for is just to map out what I want to paint. If that makes sense, like kind of put in the shapes, maybe do, you'll see me do a little bit of like cross hatchy stuff. Um, I just kind of make geometric shapes for where I think the shadows should lay. If it's a really kind of intense highlight, such as uh, the highlight on the kettle in the background there, uh, I, I might outline that as well, just to give myself a mental note of what to, you know, what to do and, and where to put stuff just to remember it later. But yeah, I kind of go in here and just put down these shapes and see if the shapes are working and hey, does it kind of look like the thing? If so, let's keep going. 
If not, um, let me erase. This is really the one part of the process where I will outright erase. Whenever I start putting paint down, I don't like to erase. Even though digital, you know, that's one of the benefits of working digitally, is you can always undo. You can undo, you can erase. But I don't. I like trying to solve the problem by painting it. So I'll just paint over it. And this is where the mixed media kind of flexibility comes in that I really like about Rebel. So Rebel is kind of world famous um, for their watercolor engine. And ironically, watercolor is not something I do. <laughs> I don't use it a lot. So with this one, I, the reason why I wanted to do a mixed media piece is to use the watercolor. I, I've been using the watercolor in a way almost the same way I think about sketching to kind of block in stuff. And it's not exact, it's not super sharp, but I think it's really interesting blocking in values this way and then blocking in color as well. Because yeah, the, the watercolor engine in Rebel is just second to none, man. It's stunning. And it, it makes me want to learn this method of watercolor. Um, I actually have real traditional watercolors and I'm too scared to use them because I'm like, ah, water is unpredictable. But I think that's what you have to embrace whenever you work that way in that medium is just let the water do its thing. Sure, there's ways you can kind of dictate a little bit where it goes and, you know, how much water and, you know, how opaque do you want the paint and things like that. But it's still scary. And I'm not super confident. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better about it, but I'm not super confident about where I want to lay down either value or color or things like that. That's why doing still lives and doing portraits and things like that, I actually enjoy quite a bit because that part of the process is solved for me already. I don't have to make it up from imagination. I don't have to vividly, you know, use that mental capacity to vividly create something that doesn't exist. Um, basically, I'm transferring something or I'm interpreting something that already exists. And yeah, it's just fun. It's relaxing to me. I, I really enjoy it. I still get a lot out of it because I get to play around with some of the stuff that's not design-based. It's more, hey, what do these colors do? How can I mix these brush strokes? Uh, and once again, Rebel is just awesome for that. So really what I do with this is, is kind of work. It's funny, I, I come from that oil painting background of you know fat over lean, and that can mean a lot of different things. And for those that don't know what that means, it basically means the amount of, of oil um, is actually increasing um, whenever you you go up a layer. So basically you want your lower layers, you want your layers directly on the canvas to dry very quickly and be thin. Um, you want them to be completely kind of bone dry before you work on a layer above it. Simply because if you have a wet layer and then you work more wet oily paint on top of wet oily paint and then your third layer is wet oily paint, that thing's never going to dry. Um, but that's a benefit of working digitally is literally it's not <laughs> tangible. It's not, it doesn't exist in the, in the real world. So you can dry the canvas. You can just make a brand new layer and, and work as if you have a dried acrylic painting, you know, and I usually do use acrylics whenever I do traditional pieces, which I need to do some more. I haven't done one in a while, but I'll usually do my color block ins with acrylics and then let it dry overnight. And then I can come in with oil and really start kind of smudging and, you know, mixing the same colors and stuff like that. So color recipes are really important. And I kind of brought that here as well. A lot of times, you know, there's some times on the channel I'll do color picking. This is not one of them. I wanted to eyeball this. It's not exactly right, but it is it is close enough to kind of get the general feel. And then you'll notice later on, I just kind of get rid of the reference and just try to make this look as cool as possible instead of trying to be, stick one-to-one. -one. Uh, I always say, don't, you know, unless it's your intent to really try to do a one-to-one -one still life or portrait or whatever, master study, for like brush stroke for brush stroke, you don't have to make it exactly the same. Uh, there should be differences because you're bringing your voice to the topic. And plus, the, you know, the photographer for this 
they already solved this problem. They have their version of this. So my take is slightly modified. It takes the main ideas and it puts them in relatively the same place. But it's different. It's still different. And I think that's a, a fun way to go about it because you're not regimented to... You're not a photocopier. You know what I mean? Like you, you gotta paint. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta make some decisions for yourself. You have to go in there. And you gotta make it work. Um, and what what's fun is I really I think I have that video about my favorite rebel settings, and it really hasn't changed a lot from that video. I know I talked a lot about I didn't use the oils a lot. I use the acrylics more. I think that's flipped. I use the oils quite a bit more now. I like the fact that they separate them out from thick brushes to thin brushes. Um, it, once again, it's great to work in that kind of fat over lean um, method to where I'll use, let's say, and I, I think I actually did this for this one, is I, let's say, do watercolor first, then work acrylic on top of that. Uh, I think acrylic is where I added some of the color. Then I use thin oil paint, so thinned with quite a bit of a uh, thinner, um, so it's not as adhesive, and then go on top of that acrylic to kind of blend in some of that stuff. And then you work with your thick oils on the very top. You get those nice impasto brush strokes. Um, very fun way to work because you're you're constantly surprising yourself whenever you're putting that stuff down. And, you know, Bob Ross always says happy accidents, and it's totally true. You you want to set your workspace up in such a way to where your stuff can surprise you. Because nothing is worse than painting by the numbers. Which is kind of ironic. A lot of people think about still life as painting by numbers. Is, oh, I see the thing, I transfer it on to the canvas. There's no creativity there. And I, th I think that's not fair, necessarily. I, I, I think it can be that. If you make it that, it can be. But I don't know. I, I think there's something enjoyable about putting your voice on something that already exists. But, man, Rebel is... It's a workhorse. I mean, once again, thanks to Escape Motions for making me a featured artist. I'm blown away. Uh, it's just so much fun, you know, to kind of dig in and work this way and the, the nice thing about loading up the program is you can really dictate what your session looks like like if you just wanted to do charcoal and pastel go for it you know and then let's say the next day or even later that afternoon you're like you know what i have an idea i saw a tutorial on youtube about a watercolor painting let me try the watercolors and with the watercolor engine, like, I don't even show 5% of what that thing can do here. I mean, there's stuff to where you can essentially, like, tilt your canvas so the water droplets, like, they, they, the water gets runny and it actually has water drips. You can actually have a blow dryer. There's, like, a blow dryer option. And you click it and then you go over the parts that you want to dry while the rest of it stays wet. It's un believable like I, I i do not know how they do it and i know they've done it they've they've done it since um earlier versions of rebel but with rebel 4 it's a different thing and like i can't wrap my head around it so i don't use it <laughs> which is not fair you know i mean it's there but th i guess that's the other thing is it's this nice security blanket because i know i could try it if i want to try it and just make something off the wall and crazy I can open it up and go for it, man. Um, and there's a lot of freedom in that. There's a lot of... It, it's nice when the tools don't get in the way. When you don't have to limit your creativity or limit what you want to achieve because the tools can't quite do it. You don't run into that with Rebel. In fact, I think the opposite. I think it turns into almost that uh, paralysis by analysis there's so many options, you can't quite pick one, which is not a bad thing, but it can be. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I always just say, just paint, man. Just get in there and experience does a lot of heavy lifting in getting better at art. You just got to experience it. What does it look like using the watercolor brush on top of the acrylic? What happens? Um, 
What happens if you mix the thick oil paint and then put watercolor on top? I can tell you it looks crazy. Because yeah, water and oil do not mix. And I think the, the mathematics, the algorithms that they use in the background of Rebel, they know that as well. <laughs> so if, if, if you really want to make a mess, um, use these mixed medias on the same layer. And just don't, don't want something exact because you ain't going to get it. I promise you. Um, it, it's going to surprise you. But hey, if that's a great way, I have a tutorial called Order from Chaos. And I think that's a great way to work sometimes is just put nonsense on your, uh, on your, on your canvas. Nonsense. Like do, colors don't matter. Values don't matter. What brush did you use? What kind of strokes did you like? Full on Jackson Pollock this thing, man. Just splatter stuff on there. And then what you do is you take your step back and you look at what you have and be like, oh, I think I could make a blank out of this, you know, or, oh, that kind of looks like a dinosaur. Can I make this a dinosaur painting? And working that way, it keeps you sharp. It keeps you problem solving. Um, and it's really cool. So it's kind of the, the, the opposite of doing a still life, of doing something that doesn't move, very stoic, um... But there's a lot of great things to learn from that. I know what was so weird to me. I loved Still Life Day in drawing class. I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to stay there forever. Because there was something fulfilling about drawing your thing and making it look like the thing. There's just a very basic one-to-one, -one, I don't know, a sense of fulfillment about that. Like, can I see what I'm looking at. Genuinely, can I look at it and can I transfer it down on the paper? And then you put your voice on it, you put your spin on it. Um, yeah, I. it's funny with Rebel, it's almost like, I mean, I'm definitely going to be using Rebel for years. I just, it's going to happen just because there's so many options. Um, and what you'll also see uh, here, kind of off side tangent, uh, I would use the different brush modes per brush. So that's kind of one of the cool things about Rebel. And the reason why I'm going to be using it for so many years is you have this variety of different brush types and shapes that you can use. So like, let's say I have the thick oil paint. Um, what I usually do is I will get kind of the flat brush or a round brush and put the strokes down, not touching them. I use it either on the... Um, I want to say it's the, the opaque setting, which is the leftmost setting on the little brush tab menu, or the brush mode menu, I'm sorry. Or I'll do like blend. And it's the same brush, but whatever you go through, I think it's opaque, mix, blend, and then an actual like blender slash palette knife. And that's available for all of your kind of wet media stuff. And I, I think that's super cool because let's say I really like the brush tip on one of these like thicker oil brushes. I can just go in, pick the palette knife version of it, and then go in and like scrape it across the canvas while keeping the same bristle type, which is awesome. Like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, imagine in traditional painting if every one of your brushes could be everything. That's unbelievable, right? But no, you have a fan brush, you have a palette knife, you have... You know, your filbert, you have your flats, you have your rounds, um, you have your synthetics, non-synthetic. You have all this stuff, and they do different things. Um, but that flexibility of Rebel, of giving you so many options per brush, so that thick, opaque, round oil brush could also essentially be your blender brush. It's kind of crazy. And, uh, yeah, it goes back to that <laughs> paralysis by analysis thing. Like, you have so many options. What, which one do you use? But I don't think that... Don't get in your head so much about that. Just go ahead and use it what feels right. And that intuition just comes with the experience of using the program. And you know me. I love all kinds of art programs. I actually have a setup, I think, in a future video... Um, I got my iPad set up on my computer, so I'll be able to do some like Procreate and uh, Infinite Painter and stuff like that. Um, I just love using the tools. I love how each company uh, chooses where they put their emphasis. 
and, and it's basically you have all of these tools you have the ultimate toolbox um to be able to kind of hop between you know a, you know, a rebel or a clip studio or photoshop or whatever uh it's good to have the options but i will say if i were to you know one of those like trapped on a desert island type thing I think Rebel would be up there as kind of the choice of the program that I would take just because it has all the different mixed media. And you can really embrace each one separately. You can keep them separate if you want to, which I usually do. I usually just go straight for the uh, acrylics and oils. Like I, I just do that more so than a lot of other stuff. But uh, the, the kind of charcoal slash pastel slash sketching stuff is getting more interesting to me like i think there might be something there i think i need to just as a pro as an artist i need to not get in my head that every piece needs to be some well rendered you know masterpiece and that's why studies are great because that pressure's off to do that this was exactly two hours i think i think the video recording took two hours and 32 seconds or something so it was exactly, I didn't, I didn't do that on purpose, but it ended up working out kind of beautifully. <laughs> so this is an exact two hour study. Um, usually anything for my personal work, anything above four hours, I start getting bored and then I want to move on to something else. So two hours is kind of that sweet spot. You start firing on all cylinders. You start making good decisions. You're, you're, you're warmed up. Your wrist is going, your dexterity is there, you know, paint is going where you want it to go. And then uh, you're kind of in and out. And it's not a huge ask. Two hours is not a huge time for a painting. Um, it's just a lot of fun, you know? And I think getting the fun back in painting, especially when you do it for a job and you do it every single day and you do it for clients and you do it for, you know, projects that have won't be announced for two years and stuff like that, it can get kind of draining. But having a, a, a feature set like Rebel um, or having kind of your favorite tools that you can always kind of dig into and, and just have fun, uh, just let loose and experiment and, you know, you know, flex a little bit, go out there and <laughs> kind of stretch out and see what you're capable of. And you're going to surprise yourself. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of fun on this. Uh, yeah, I'm liking the mixed media approach. I think there's something to it. I don't actually see a lot of other uh, fantasy artists do this type of thing, uh, especially digitally. I do see it traditionally. A lot of oil painting, they start with the charcoal and value passes and color prompts and stuff. I see that a lot. So maybe trying to transfer that onto the digital realm by doing the same piece multiple times in Rebel using different tools, that might be interesting. Um, and like we said before, I, I do think I'm going to start probably next year, do some comparison videos. Um, but that's that's down the line. That's down the line, comparison videos between different softwares and stuff. Not reviews, not battles of, you know, which one's better and which one's the best. Uh, don't worry, that, that one will be coming with the year-end review. <laughs> <laughs> we did one last year. I think we're going to do one every year. Uh, but, but yeah. Uh, man, Rebel's fun, man. I want to go back in and start painting again. Uh, but anyway, that's my time. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, yeah, go do some still life studies. A lot of people in our class didn't like it. I love them. Um, go, go flex your brush stroke um, muscle. You know what I mean? Just go and... Have fun and put down some thick paint and figure it out. Move it around and just make some cool stuff happen. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, go check out all of the featured artists at Rebel's site. They did a blog post announcing all of them. And man, oh man, some of these people are absolute legends. Some rock stars. And it's funny, there's a few of them that... Um, I think one of them I actually worked with on a project. Um, can't talk about yet, but uh, yeah, <laughs> some cool stuff coming out of there, man. Uh, but thank you once again to Escape Motions for the feature. Appreciate you very much. Uh, yeah, and I know I'd already disclosed it, but you know, not paid to say this stuff. There's no money changing hands. I just like Rebel, 
and I submitted my stuff and they said yes that they'd like to feature me and that's been just incredible so appreciate you all at Escape Motions appreciate you all here on the YouTube land um, let me know how you're doing show me some of your work go join that Patreon man uh, only one dollar a month I will never raise the price you get exclusive behind the scenes stuff some making ofs uh, you're actually going to get the full file for this still life as well I have some behind the scenes things I'm working on some other PSD files uh, might be doing some paint overs in the next few months so for only a dollar you get that you get a discord all that stuff and uh, yeah a great art community really talented artists I need to be there more but yeah I'm working on a few projects that are taking up a lot of my time but anyways, that's neither here nor there. Hope you're doing well. Stay safe. We will see you all next time. And until then, go make cool stuff. Peace.